Greetings YouTube, the Lair of the Lost Lord DLC expansion has been out for about a day now for Nino Kuni 2 and I've seen on Reddit that a few people are struggling with a few things that the game doesn't really explain very well so here are 5 tips which I hope will help you on your way through this expansion. If you are new to the channel please do subscribe to be kept notified and updated of future Nino Kuni 2 content. The first tip I want to share with you has everything to do with the new objectives interface which you can see in the upper right hand corner of the screen. So first thing is you'll probably have noticed that the danger level gauge of the previous Dreamer Doors and Faraway Forest have now been removed and replaced with this new interface and the way this works is very simple. This will give you an opportunity to earn lots and lots of orbs as you progress through the various floors of the dungeon and you can see that each floor will have its own set of three or objectives which you can complete and are optional and each objective has its own star rating which basically works as the multiplier and is dependent on the difficulty of that particular objective so for example an objective with a star rating of 1 has a single multiplier and will give you uh, 10 orbs once it's completed an objective with 6 star rating will, as you probably guessed, give you 60 orbs on completion because of its 6x multiplier, but alas, it's likely to be far more difficult to complete. Objectives are going to have to be completed by the character that the player is controlling, and it doesn't really matter what other characters do that are controlled by the computer, they're generally not going to interfere with your earning of any of the objectives. So for example, if you have an objective that requires you to win with controlling Batu only, then it doesn't matter of the fact that there's going to be other party members doing their own thing, as long as you don't switch player control over to them. So long as you only control Batu through the encounter, then you will meet that objective and get the reward. The same is true for objectives that require you not to use skills in battle, then it doesn't matter what your other party members do, as long as you don't use skills with the character you're controlling. Likewise, Higgledy skills also count as skills on that objective, so bonus tip for you there, if you want to earn that, don't cast Higgledy spells either. All in all, objectives are by far and away the best way of attaining a mass amount of orbs quickly and are going to come in invaluable when it comes to unlocking chests later on that give you better rewards based upon the number of orbs you have. So don't neglect this feature, it is optional, but make sure you try and stay on top of it as you make your way through the dungeon. With so many orbs in your possession, you're going to want to spend them. However, before you do so on the blue chest and NPCs that scatter the floors, I strongly recommend for your first run through the labyrinth that you save them for the one-time boss events that occur every 10 levels. That's because each of these bosses will leave behind a chest, which if you empower with over 800 orbs, you're going to be guaranteed, or be very close to be guaranteed, a golden item reward. This is the strongest type of item that can drop, in the labyrinth and you don't want to miss out on these but once you've killed these one time bosses then the next time you go through that set of floors again you can of course spend your orbs on other things. Since these bosses do occur every 10 levels you're going to have to work pretty hard to make sure you've got over 800 orbs each time you encounter them but if you complete the ob objectives quite regularly then you can aim for about 100 orbs per floor and that will give you plenty every 10 floors to unleash in the chest at the end of each boss. Along with all the other new features the expansion has brought us, the level cap has also been raised from 99 to 120, and with an increase in level cap, naturally people have been wondering how it is they can reach it. Fortunately there is an abundance of experience to be gained over the 100 floors of the Labyrinth Dungeon so my biggest piece of advice to you about this topic would simply be just play the game, play the DLC and you'll see your levels increasing as you progress through. As a matter of fact this probably outweighs even the older experience farming methods for those of you that are not even level 99 yet. The Labyrinth does start with enemies about level, well quite low actually from the floor 1 to floor 20. So whatever level you are in the end game, you can pretty much pick up with your experience farming right from the get-go in the labyrinth without having to worry about using other methods. And if you just play through eventually, it won't even take that much time I don't think, you'll reach level 120. And the reason for that is even the regular mobs in this place do seem to give quite a lot of XP. So it might even be a little bit overtuned, 
but it does save having to worry about finding specific enemies to level up on. If you've farmed some of the previous dungeons in Nino Kuni 2 for any length of time, such as Far Away Forest, you might be swimming in crafting materials. Unfortunately, a lot of those are not going to do you any good with this particular expansion, since a lot of the new crafting that's become available to us is going to require new materials that are only available from the Labyrinth Dungeon. And that also means that even if you are swimming with these materials, the older materials I mean, don't neglect on looting these sparkly spots as you see them in the Labyrinth because they are likely to contain new materials most of the time. Even in the early levels of the Labyrinth, you'll often find new materials from these sparklies and from enemy drops as well. You can always identify which of the materials are new because they'll have a new rarity rating when you mouse over them in the item list. They have a red star rating if they are unique to the Labyrinth. And of course, they go from one red star for common items up to whatever the maximum amount is, five or six, I'd imagine. I bring this tip to you courtesy of the fact that I did actually go through quite a few floors of the Labyrinth, completely neglecting the golden sparkly spots, thinking that I've already got enough ingredients from previous runs of the Wilder Dungeons. And yeah, came to do some crafting and wasn't able to do so. So now I collect everything and I advise that you do also. Next up then, I would like to talk about the Martial Methods. This is a new form of character advancement that has become available as part of the DLC. And it's quite fun to use, so hopefully this will be helpful to you. So this will unlock as you make your way through the Labyrinth. You don't have to get very far, fortunately. And once it does, on the Character screen, if you go over to Equipment and Skills on any of your characters, you'll have this new tab that says it's uh, Martial Methods. And you can see here that by default, we're going to have the classic style. This is the martial method we've been using all throughout the game. It's what we know, it's just now got a name. But you can now go ahead and change to any of the other martial methods that you unlock. And you unlock these as you progress through the various side quests that the Labyrinth will send you on as you make your way further down into its core. So for example, for my characters I've unlocked the Ding Dong Discipline and the Gizmo Supremo. And I can go ahead and select either of these whenever I wish to do so. Now with Evan, the Ding Dong Discipline is selected, which gives him access to two more perks. Now these are available only when the Ding Dong Discipline is selected here as the martial method. And for this particular perk, what's going to happen is if you evade at the correct time, then you'll slow time down and can unleash these square and triangle combos against the enemies for extra damage. Although of course I could go ahead and select the Gizmo Supremo. But what's this? There's no perks here. And I don't have any available, so there's not much point in selecting this right now, but we can do something about that. If we go to the training ground, either of the training grounds, doesn't matter which, in our kingdom, then we can actually take Evan over to the building itself, and we've got a new feature now that's part of this whole martial method advancement. And if we select a character, in this case Evan, since that's who we're working on, you can see we can actually spend points into each of the martial methods that we've unlocked. So the classic style, for example, which as I mentioned is just the martial method we've been using by default, can also be boosted. And you'll see that we have method points. Now method points are interesting. They are unique to each character. So if I spend all five of these method points here with Evan on the classic style, then every other character is still gonna have their five method points to spend, or however many. Uh, it, it's always going to be the same, sorry. If I go over to Roland, he'll have five. Every character will have five, but individual of one another. And you can also go ahead and uh, reset the points that you've spent if you want to. So if I go ahead and learn Soldier Surge here, which fills the Zingage more quickly, which can be quite useful actually in the Labyrinth since a lot of the objectives require us to have that Zingage filled and abilities cast with it. So that gives me two points left, which obviously isn't enough to spend anything else, but I can go ahead and reset those method points. Before I do that though, since it does cost money uh, as well, I should point that out. You'll notice that the other disciplines for Evan also have their own method points, and these two are independent of the method points for the other disciplines. So the Ding Dong discipline, for example, still has all of its method points available, despite the fact that I've purchased an ability from the classic style method. So basically, you can just go ahead 
and learn all the abilities that you want to learn as the points become available it won't interfere with everything else that you already have learned from the other disciplines etc etc so how do you get more method points since obviously five isn't going to be enough here to learn more than one ability which is a bit annoying well this is where those books come in handy so you've probably as you've been going through the labyrinth progressing through, through the new dungeon been uh, collecting various books maybe i can show you some of those um they're called manuals or something i believe there we go look like the manual of the maiden i've got five of those and the mechanical uh, sorry the mechanics manual these are the things that when you loot them they're going to add to the maximum amount of points that you have to spend for each character so if we get another mechanics manual then that's going to give us more martial perks to spend with uh the gizmo one i believe that is so you can really you know as you go for the dungeon here just boost the amount of points that you're going to have to spend and obviously in turn you can use that to make your characters even more powerful so for example if we go back to evan here momentarily uh we want to give him some gizmo supremo perks so what i'm going to do is head back over to the training ground select evan and under the gizmo supremo tree here we're going to go ahead and spend some of these method points and the one I'm going to go for is the turret tech. The ordnance pack is useful if you want to do some crowd control. It freezes enemies and controls enemies, uh, but doesn't do any damage. And yes, that's going to have its, effect, its benefits and whatnot. So I'm not saying this is bad by any stretch of the imagination. But I just like, you know, dishing out raw damage, quite frankly. And that's where the turret tech is going to come into play. So we'll go ahead and purchase turret tech. And that's going to make these other abilities that are connected to turret tech available for purchase with our method points as well. But before we have a look at those, I just want to make sure that turret tech has been equipped. And turret tech should give us two abilities. So if we go back to equipment and skills here and head over to Evan, we now have those two abilities, torch turret and plasma pod. And we can assign those to hotkeys in whichever order we want. And you can see that we can catch eight, cast each of these one time. What that means is how many times you can use these abilities before their cooldown begins. So at the moment, as soon as we've done a single cast of Torch Turret, then we're going to have to wait until its cooldown's over before we can use it again. Both of these abilities, by the way, summon uh, flying turrets that whiz around the battlefield and, you know, unleash their various effects amongst the enemies. So Torch Turret will unleash a flame effect and plasma pod will unleash uh, electricity over the battlefield so very fun to use uh, but we want to boost those even more in power so we're going to go back to evan here at the training ground and we can boost those two abilities by using the skill tree under turret tech here so torch turret plus will allow us to summon one more of the fire turrets before uh, they're both on call down there so we'll go ahead and learn that and the same with Plasma Pod Plus. And we can go ahead and boost the effects of those things as well. So Firestorm will boost the effect of the Torch Turret. Let's go ahead and do that. And not only does it boost the damage effect, but it will also cause the turret to explode once its time's expired for even more damage. And I won't... Oh, I can afford to do Power Surge. Let's go ahead and do that. So that will boost the effect of the plasma pod. Okay, and there's also all this other stuff as well that you can look at. Uh, but obviously, you're going to want to get more points. So let's just have a look at those turrets in battle so we can see how it works using these martial methods. Okay, so if we hold R2 down, you can see we've got our new skills. We can switch between those and the old skills just by using up or down on the D-pad there. So there's our original skills, which we can use at any time. Or we can use the skills of our currently equipped martial method, in this case the Gizmo Supremo. And we've got our two turrets on their hotkeys, so let's go ahead and fire those off. We get two casts of each before they go on cooldown. So as you can see, this is the lightning storm one. And you can see the turret in the air there. Let's go ahead and summon the fire one as well. There he is. And he will just go around the battlefield blasting fireballs at various enemies. Let's try and keep up with him. Obviously, he's automatic, so we don't have to do this. And the fact that he's flashing now indicates that his time is about to run out and he will explode 
uh, when that happens. And obviously, it's helpful if he does that on a group of enemies. Uh, but since they're dying so quickly anyway, we didn't actually get to see that explosion have any effect. But if I just bring up the uh, gizmo skills once more, you can see we have one more cast each of those turrets. And the cooldowns on the first cast are almost up anyway. So we can actually get those out fairly quickly. Which makes them really, really useful indeed, in my opinion. But please have a play about with all those different skills and martial methods. And let me know in the comment section which you think are your favourite and which are the most powerful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. There we have my five tips then, folks. I hope they've been a help to you. But if you have any other advice that you think will be beneficial to people, please do share it in the comment section. I do love hearing your feedback. Any other tips or tricks that you might have uh, available would be very, very welcomed, I'm sure. But that's it for me for today, folks. A massive thank you to all of you who continue to support me via Patreon and or YouTube membership. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>